Welcome to another video in the series Maths for Programmers. So far in this series we've been looking primarily at number theory algorithms. In this video though we'll be looking at a basic geometry algorithm, how to find the area of a polygon. Any program that deals with computer graphics is bound to deal with polygons. A very good example is an online map. Buildings and parks and other man-made structures in an online map are typically represented by polygons. Here I'm highlighting just four of the polygons representing buildings. Another good example is three-dimensional computer games. So in a popular game like Counter-Strike, the various surfaces on display are usually approximated by polygons. Informally, a polygon is defined as a closed two-dimensional shape whose boundaries are all made of line segments. So the simplest kind of polygon is a triangle. Another slightly more complicated polygon is something like this, which has a large number of sides and with varying angles. However, both of these are classified as simple polygons because their edges do not intersect each other. An example of a non-simple polygon would be something like this. Here you can see that the edges of the polygon intersect each other at many points. In this video, we'll only be dealing with simple polygons and how to find the area of simple polygons. For any geometry algorithm, the choice of space is very important. Since polygons are two-dimensional shapes, the natural selection is to use a two-dimensional space. So we can use the simple Cartesian plane. So this plane has an x-axis and a y-axis. On this plane, let's say we had a point with x value 3 and y value 1 labeled by A. What is the best way to represent such a point in our program? A good design decision would be to use a separate data structure or a class to represent a point. So let's see how we can do that in C or C++. We can simply declare a structure point which has two member variables x and y to represent the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the point. Notice that we use doubles to store both the x and y coordinate because typically the value of a coordinate can be any real number. To represent a point such as A in our code, we would simply declare a variable, let's say we call it A, of the type point, and then we can assign the x coordinate to 3 and the y coordinate to 1. Okay, now that we know how to store a point, let's draw a very simple triangle. So the first vertex of the triangle, we can keep it as A, which is at uh, 3, 1. We'll then put up another vertex, we'll call it B at 2, 3. The third vertex though will be somewhat special. We'll choose it to be O, the origin of the coordinate system. So both the X and Y values of this point O are 0. So what is the area of this triangle OAB? Because of the fact that one of the vertices lies on the origin, there is a very simple formula that involves the coordinate values of the other two vertices. So in this case, since O is the origin, the formula involves the vertices A and B. And this formula is as follows. It is the X coordinate of A multiplied by the Y coordinate of B minus the Y coordinate of A multiplied by the X coordinate of B, the whole divided by two. The expression inside this pair of parentheses has a special meaning. In vector algebra, this expression stands for the cross product of the vectors A and B. With this in mind, now let's look at the code to calculate the area of a triangle, one of whose points is on the origin and the other two points will be taken in as arguments. So let us first define the cross product itself as a function. So given two points A and B, this function simply computes AX into BY minus ay into bx, so it computes the cross product of the vectors a and b. We can now write the function to compute the area. So given the points a and b, this uh, computes the area of the triangle oab. We simply take the cross product and divide it by 2. If we apply the formula for these values of a and b, so a is 3, 1 and b is 2, 3, we get 3 into 3 minus 1 into 2, the whole divided by 2, which is equal to 3.5. Now, what if we were to exchange A and B? So, A became the point 2, 3, 
and B became the point 3 comma 1. Of course the triangle itself does not change but if you apply our formula if you apply the code that we've written here you will get the answer as minus 3.5. So we get the area having the same magnitude of 3.5 but the sign is opposite. This is because the cross product has a very interesting property. When the triangle OAB is in clockwise order then the value of the cross product is negative. On the other hand when the triangle OAB is in counterclockwise order then the value of the cross product is positive. This property of the cross product function where a negative value is written for a clockwise triangle and a positive value is written for a counterclockwise triangle will be very useful to us later on. However, for now we need to fix our area method so that this return value is always positive because a negative area does not make sense. To do that, we will simply take the absolute value of cross product divided by 2. Here I am using the abs function from the CMath library in C++. In order to use this function, we will need to put a include statement. These two statements help us include the CMath library and uh, then allow us to use all functions from the standard namespace. The standard namespace contains the abs function that we are using in our area method. Ok, now we know how to find the area of one kind of polygon. Basically we know how to find the area of a triangle which has one of its vertices on the origin. Now let's try to extend our area algorithm a little bit and see how to find the area of a triangle where none of the vertices are on the origin. So let's say we had a triangle ABC like this with the origin inside of it. So one way in which we can solve this problem is by subtracting the value of the coordinates of A from A, B and C. Essentially what we are doing is translating this triangle so that A moves to the origin and B and C also translate appropriately. So we then get a triangle like this where A has been translated to the origin and we can uh, now use our previous formula on the triangle OBC to calculate its area. However, there is a more elegant way of computing the same area. Instead of translating the triangle so that A is at the origin, we can actually construct three smaller triangles inside of ABC by drawing three lines from the origin O, one to A, one to B and one to C, we get three smaller triangles and the sum of the areas of these three triangles is equal to the area of the triangle ABC. Since each of these tri triangles has one vertex at the origin, we can simply apply our previous formula to calculate the area of OAB plus OBC plus OCA and this will be our final answer. So now let's take a look at the code to calculate the area of a triangle given all three points A, B and C. So in this modified function, we now take three points as arguments A, B as well as C and none of them need to be at the origin. We calculate the sum of the triangle OAB, OBC as well as OCA and then we take the absolute value of sum and divide it by 2. Ok, this algorithm seems to work well for any triangle with points A, B, C if the origin is inside the triangle but what if the origin is outside the triangle? So let's say we have a triangle ABC like this. Let's see what happens. So initially we are computing the cross product of A and B which means we are computing the area of the triangle OAB. Since OAB is counterclockwise in this case the value will be positive and I'll show this area in green. In the second step we calculate the value of the cross product of B and C which means we are calculating the area of the triangle OBC. Once again since OBC is counterclockwise this value will also be positive and I will be showing it in green. So now the total we have calculated is actually more than the area of the triangle. However finally we calculate the cross product of C and A. Now OCA is actually in clockwise order so the value will be negative so I will show this area in red. So we are subtracting the area OCA from the area that we have already calculated. Let me erase the areas where the red and green overlap 
and we see that the area computed finally the part shown in green is exactly the area we needed so our area function works for any kind of triangle not just those containing the origin our next step will be to figure out how to extend this algorithm so that it works not just for triangles but for polygons containing any number of sides so let's take an example of this six-sided polygon with vertices a b c d e and f which contains the origin an approach to finding the area of this polygon based on the approach we used for the triangle could be let us divide this six-sided polygon into many smaller triangles such that each triangle has at least one vertex at the origin and then we can just take the sum of the areas of all these small triangles in order to get the sum of the polygon so we can take the triangle OAB and then the triangle OBC and then OCD and so on if we look at all six of these triangles the sum of their areas is equal to the sum of the polygon itself and each of these triangles has one vertex at the origin now let's look at the code to compute the area of a polygon with an arbitrary number of sides to start with we'll actually need to update the signature of the method we can no longer take individual points since the polygon can have any number of sides instead we'll take in an array of points which gives us all the vertices of the polygon and we'll also take an additional integer n as input which gives us the number of sides in the polygon so we'll take a variable called sum and initialize it to zero this variable denotes the sum of the areas of the triangles which together make up our polygon from our diagram to the right side it is quite clear that an n-sided polygon will have n triangles inside it so we'll run a loop n times where each iteration of the loop should compute one of the triangles looking at the diagram it's quite clear that each triangle has of course one vertex at the origin and the other two vertices are consecutive vertices in the polygon so we have OAB, OBC, OCD and so on this is true all the way until OEF but for the last vertex F we actually want to pair it with the first vertex of the polygon so OF pairs with A to give us the triangle OFA so inside our loop we'll add the cross product of vertices of i with the vertex at i plus 1 we use this operator modulo n to take care of the special case for the last vertex because we want the last vertex to pair with the 0th vertex by taking modulo n when i is n minus 1 i plus 1 will equal 0 outside the loop as before we can simply take the absolute value of sum divided by 2 and return it so we now have an algorithm that computes the area of a polygon with any number of sides as long as it is almost convex and it contains the origin now the question for you is do you think this algorithm will still work if we had a very concave polygon like this sitting outside the origin well actually this algorithm works fine even for concave polygons like these but I'll let you figure out the proof to that one in our next video of the series we'll see how we can use the vector cross product to solve another important geometry problem how to find if two line segments intersect in the meanwhile I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching